wouldn't want her to find this magazine, would ya? Big Bad Butch Hartman, real name Elmer, was the creator of Fairly Odd Parents and other huge shows like Danny Phantom. As is now formula for pilots, I'm going to have a quick look at Hartman's history as it leads up to the first pilot for Fairly Odd Parents. The Butcher's earliest animated experience was seeing the Jungle Book as a kid, and he remembered that he marched just like the elephants in the aisle, which I'm sure annoyed everybody else in the cinema. How about you sit down, Butch, and behave, you little brat? In school, where he wasn't allowed to just march about like an elephant, he would draw pictures including ones of his teacher, the Big Lick Arse. One teacher praised her pet for this, which made good little Butch realise that art was a way he could receive attention from adults, and then, just maybe, the hitting would stop. Thanks guys, I got no, there was no hitting. It's great. Yeah. Joking. Watching clips of the Butcher, he seems like a really cool, confident, jock type character, but back when he was still a little goody two-shoes, he was into all of the nerd stuff, and before it was mainstream. He would collect DC and Marvel comic books and draw his favourite characters such as Superman and Spider-Man. Later, in Fairly Odd Parents, he would create his own classic superhero characters like the Crimson Chin and Crash Nebula. His storytelling skills were formed from not just comics but other nerd endeavours he would do with his pals. They would draw their own cartoon and comics together and play Dungeons and Dragons. He was such an 80s kid, he and his goonie mates would also make their own films with a Super A camera. Well, let's skip ahead to his college years and guess, just guess where he went. Here's a clue, he's a famous animator who isn't the party man Van Parable. That's right, he went to good old CalArts. And in classic, irritating, overachieving CalArts way, Butch managed to wrangle his first job as an in-between artist for Don Bluth's American Tale. He didn't animate enough footage to be credited it though, but at least he got to be a contestant on the Mash Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Butch, tell us about you. <laughs> Well, I'm originally from New Baltimore, Michigan, and I uh, came on here about three months ago to study character animation at California Institute of the Arts. Yeah, a strange show. To make sure her seams are straight, right. yeah. I'll let you. I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> are they okay? No. Oh, well, that means I have to straighten them out, doesn't it? <laughs> He would eventually stumble his way to Hanna Barbera Studios, just as they were turning it to Cartoon Network and was introduced to their short cartoon program. Here he realized he wanted to run his own show, and he would make multiple cartoons for the series, the most well known being Fish and Chips. Number three, clap. <laughs> do, die, do, die. do you feel Hamptown Races is an appropriate song for this situation? Would you prefer something peppier? I prefer silence! But there were others like Gramps and a strange one called Hillbilly Blue. They are all fine, but I can see why they weren't picked up for a full series. My favourite one was probably Gramps, which has a really fun, silly energy to it. I was on the beach enjoying the scenery, ha cha cha. When the aliens invaded! These shorts were valuable experience though, and helped him hone his craft to get to the stage where he could make something like Fairly Odd Parents. It's actually nice to talk about someone who didn't just haphazardly land a huge cartoon deal right after college. Wish I landed one. Big Bad Butch Hartman worked his way up the ranks and worked on a lot of really big shows, including Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, and I am Weasel. While working on Johnny Bravo, he was asked by Fred Cyber to come over to Nickelodeon to work on the Oh Yeah Cartoons, Nickelodeon's version of What a Cartoon. He initially turned it down, but six months later, after Johnny Bravo wasn't picked up for another series, he called up Fred and got the last slot for Oh Yeah Cartoons. He did not have a solid idea that he was happy with yet, but while doodling a little boy, Fairly Odd Parents quickly grew in his mind. He was going to name the boy Mike after his brother, but they had a fight that day, so he named it after his other brother Timmy. The lesson here is, if you have a brother who draws, you better be nice to him, Shane! Um, uh, anyways, as he was developing this idea, he wanted to think of a way to be able to put Timmy anywhere. He looked at what was out at the time and decided that he can't do science because of Dexter, so he chose magic. He also didn't want Timmy to have powers himself, so he gave him a little fairy godmother, who at the time was called Venus. Building on top of that, he wanted this proto Wanda to be able to talk to someone else who wasn't Timmy, and he realised that he had never heard of a fairy godfather, and that's where Cosmo came from. He thought of how we could hide them as animals because kids like having secrets, and then the next logical thing to come up with was a villain, and since Timmy was a little kid, maybe he had an evil babysitter. God damn we have the makings of a hit show here, and all of this carefully thought out cartoon premise took him 15 minutes to come up with. 15 minutes. God damn these Calar students. He brought this million dollar musing over to Fred and Nickelodeon, who picked it up for their shorts program, and the butcher got to work. While he was making Fairly Odd Parents for Nickelodeon, they asked him would he like to spend more money on the art or on the writing. 
no, I want to spend money on the writing, the storytelling. Because, I mean, yeah. it'd be nice if we could spend money on the art, but the storytelling <laughs> has to come first because um, an example I point to is the Far Side comic strip. Well, one of the most horribly drawn comic strips of all time, <laughs> but always funny. Well, we better have an actual look at this pilot, I guess, and see has the butcher improved much since Fish and Chips. First airing in 1998, it starts with a pretty bland title card of the fairies. Kind of ruins the surprise of them in the cartoon, but that's a real nitpick. Wanda herself looks exactly as she would in the series, but Cosmo is a bit off model with shorter hair. Butch has said that their designs and the way that they float up and down was based on the Great Kazoo from the Flintstones. And speaking of the Flintstones, Wanda's hair is said to be based on Wilma Flintstone. In this pilot, the fairies are a lot more loving to each other, and Cosmo is much smarter. As the show would progress, he became a lot dumber and a lot less affectionate to Wanda. Get it, Cosmo? Stop breathing my air! <laughs> It's not me, it's you! <laughs> the swine. That's men for ya. <laughs> Jerks. The house and old background art are how they would look in the final series, so no big departure there. Our first big change is when we see the mom and dad, who are shown like classic adults in old Tom and Jerry cartoons. This was also done in Cow and Chicken, a show that Big Bad Butch Hartman had worked on. Thankfully, when it came to the series, Butch gave the mom and dad proper design and characteristics, and they would become real standouts in the show. <laughs> hey! Looking good, Turner! Dinkleberg! We also see Ficky, who isn't as refined as she would be in the show, but still pretty close. Timmy, on the other hand, looks quite different. He's not as pointy or stocky in his design, and like Dexter in his short, Timmy's head is much longer. But I actually really like Timmy's design here. The final model they went with for the series was the right call, but I think for this short, he looks pretty cool. The weirdest thing about this design is, well, I think I'll let Big Bad Butch Hartman tell you himself. And this is way before I refined Timmy's design. And you can see real quick uh, here on this drawing, Timmy's got ears on both sides of his head. From that angle, you can see both of his ears, which is a no-no now. You don't draw Timmy Turner that way. And I was able to refine that, you know, work on that design over the years as the show went on. Let's continue. Thanks, Butch. We see Vicky acting all nice to Timmy's parents, but she immediately drops the facade as soon as they leave and calls Timmy a squirt, instead of the usual twerp as she would say in the series. She proceeds to force Timmy to do all of the work, and because this is the 90s Wild West where cartoons could get away with literally anything, she threatens him with an implied porn magazine. That's not mine! The next change from the series is Vicky revealing that she has a brother. <laughs> In a later pilot, they would change this to a sister who was in love with Timmy. And Timmy, being a real piece of work, did not return these affections until Tui became more traditionally attractive for him in those fun live-action Fairly Odd Parent movies starring Drake Bell. This Timmy, I don't know, he's a bit of a... Continuing with the pilot, Timmy is sent to bed early after he has done all of the dishes and Ficky has eaten all of the pizza. So far, the pacing isn't fantastic, it is a bit slow in parts. I do enjoy all the weird drawings of Timmy, but that's not something everyone will enjoy. The best part is Vicky being a real dickhead to Timmy, just making him miserable, which is a good thing. Once he's alone in his room, Timmy asks his magic 8 ball when his parents will be home. It tells him that they are at Titanic the director's cut. Then, throwing his rattle out of the crib, the baby has a temper tantrum and throws the ball at the wall, like a spoiled little brat. So obviously he's rewarded with his fairy own fairy godparents. <sighs> No justice. Thankfully, Cosmo and Wanda immediately liven up this short. Wanda sounds just like she would in the series, but Cosmo has a much deeper voice, but it's still very funny now. Ooh, magic. Ooh, we grab wishes. <laughs> Cosmo and Wanda explain the rules and premise to the little delinquent, and in his commentary, which made this episode very easy to make, Butch, don't call me Elmer Hartman, points out that the rule book is yellow instead of purple. Thanks, Butch. Vicky comes in to break up the fun, and we see the first appearance of the fish disguise. As the show goes on, they disguise themselves as many other objects and animals, usually in their character colors. I see you, Cosmo and Wanda. When Vicky leaves, the brat decides instead of helping the world with these incredible fairies, it is far more important to torture poor Vicky. The rest of the pilot has a lot of elements that would go into the series opening titles, as Timmy uses his powers to harass his poor babysitter. At one stage, he turns her into a fly and literally tries to murder her. He's a psycho. He's, he's a goddamn psycho. He should not have this power. As the pilot comes to a close, we see that the psychopath Timmy has gaslit Vicky into thinking it was all just a bad dream and in her head. He then gets her to hand wash all of his laundry. Like, what a weird power move to do. Ugh. She agrees under duress from the fish, but reveals she's going to find out what's going on around here, setting things up nicely for a full series. And that's the Fairly Odd Parents pilot. It's alright. I think I was spoiled with how funny Johnny Bravo was and the animation quality of Dexter. What this pilot has going for it though is potential. 
I do think you can see a lot of potential in a cartoon like this. You've got the magic where the kid can wish for anything that he wants. You've got the babysitter who's secretly evil, plotting to kill the kid all the time. You've got the fairies who are magic but don't get it right all the time. And just an infinite number of things they can do. Again, the other thing kids love is to have secrets. Timmy's got a secret from his parents. And so I think that really showed a lot of potential. I love this show back in the day and I see it fresh as it went. Once they used up all the potential with Vicky, they had Mr. Crocker, Timmy's fairy hating teacher, become the main villain of the show. Poor Mr. Crocker, another character hard done by. It is later revealed that his madness stems from him losing Cosmo and Wanda as his fairy godparents. A madness that is also used as the primary source of power in the fairy world. Some weird morals going on here. There are a lot more pilots for the show, 10 in total. They refine Timmy's look in the second one and keep it for the remaining shorts before refining it one more time for the series. These shorts would fix some things, like mentioned earlier, Tootie is introduced as Vicky's sister in The Fairy Flu. Here Tootie is still in love with Timmy, but has a very different design and is not as socially awkward as the show Tootie. In the temp we get our first look at Jorgen von Strangel who is exactly like his show counterpart and we get our first look at other elves and fairy world. In the final short, Super Humor, we see the first appearance of the Crimson Chin and his cool comic book world. The Crimson Chin episodes were always some of my favourites on the show, especially the one where he has like a weird existential crisis and his comic is just him in the feeble position crying. All of these shorts are available to watch on YouTube and are a lot more fun than the first pilot. They aired over 4 years as part of Oh Yeah Cartoons with the last one airing a week before the official series premiere. They are all only 7 minutes long in contrast to the official series episodes which would consist of 2 11 minute shorts. If you are a very busy person like me, I say just watch the first and the last one for context, but they are all pretty good overall. Thanks for watching and if you don't hate me like I hated Timmy, please like and subscribe if, if you want to. Boy, I sure did say a thing or two about a thing or two. Who knows what I might say next? Could be something good. Only one way to find out, and that's by liking and subscribing. Go on, you know you want to.